Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're tuning in across the globe. Dave coming to you here live from the 180. And this week, I am starting a new series. It's called Interview on the 180. And my very first guest, I am so honored. I'm, I'm really thrilled to death to have her here. Um, she is a John Maxwell stage time finalist. My great friend from Houston, Texas, to Addis. But let me give you a little bit about Two. Two's a chemical engineer by education. She's got a PhD. Yes, she is very sharp, folks. She is very smart, very sharp. Okay, she spent the last seven years working in the oil and gas industry. She founded an organization called Calm Leadership and Development to inspire people so they can strive to become the best versions of themselves. Two lives in Houston with her husband, Kyle, and their four-year-old daughter, Lucy, and her two cats, Moki and Nori. That is so sweet. Well, welcome to the interview welcome series, too. I'm hey, so glad you... Hey, I'm so glad you took time out of your busy schedule to be here with me today to launch this new interview series, which folks, by the way, it'll be every Friday, 930 live right here on Facebook on the 180 platform. Uh, and if you are out there watching this, please put your comments. We can actually see your comments if you want to if you want to ha ask any questions as we go through the interview series here. Um, of two or myself, by all means, put them in, put them in the chat there and I can actually show them up on the screen. So two, welcome again. Um, what brought you to the 180 revolution? Yeah, thanks Dave. Well, first of all, I just want to say that, you know, you and I met at the IMC, so the International Master Certification a couple of months ago. And really, I just love being around you. You know, I love your energy and how you add value to people, how you uh, help people. So that's really, you know, what brought me here is the value of the team, the, your, your purpose, right? So you're all about to add value and encourage others why they, they're going through the setbacks in life. And I really think, you know, all of us at some point in our life, right, we face obstacles and challenges and we all need somebody to encourage us um, and sometimes, you know, believe in us the way that we couldn't even do it for ourselves. So really happy to be here. Well, I, I am. Yes. Like you said, we met at the IMC and it, folks, it was instant connection. But what two's not telling you is really about six months leading up to the IMC. We were on calls a couple times a week with our good friend, uh, Roddy Galbraith. And we were learning, you know, how to really become uh, better professional speakers uh, from him. And I was honored and thrilled to be able to see my friend, too, up there on the stage, being the first person of our stage time <laughs> finalist to share her story. But I want her it's to share the story yeah. with you. Yes. So, too, can you share your story with us? Yeah, sure. So for those of you that don't know me, so I grew up in the south of Vietnam. Um, so my dad was a small business owner and my mom was a housewife. Uh, she stayed home and take care of me and uh, my sister. So when I was uh, 18, I received a scholarship to go study abroad in France. Um, so pretty much, you know, the first two years in France were the most difficult time in my life. Well, the, the country of France, you know, moving from an Asian country to a Western country, it was a big shift for me. And also the language barrier, I didn't speak French very well at the beginning. And, you know, that affected my academic performance as well. You know, from one of the top students in Vietnam, now I could barely make it here, you know. <laughs> I always <laughs> ended up you know, from the top, actually from the bottom of the class. Um, and on top of that, I pretty much constantly need to worry about my financial situation because, so I had a scholarship, but that only covered the basic, you know, the tuition and part of the housing. And I remember, you know, the school closed pretty much, I think three, four times per year. And during that time I had to find a place to stay and I couldn't afford to, you know, rent a, a decent apartment or, or any place. 
So I, I can't remember, you know, how many days I just spent sleeping on the couch, you know, from people houses, you know, whoever can, can help me to stay so that I can study. Um, so after two years, I, I took a very competitive exam and actually I got admitted to an engineering school in Po. And I love the program there. It was a master uh, degree program uh, on in process engineering. But the only problem was it was in Po. So it's like five hours by train away from Paris where I was. And mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody there. I didn't have money. I didn't have any family, friends. So I pretty much decided I'm not going to move. I mean, I was so scared <laughs> um, at that time. So I kind of have a, I found a side job in Paris as a living nanny. So basically, you know, I, I live with somebody for free, but then in exchange, I take care of the kid. So that's what I did. At least, you know, I don't need to worry about where to live, you know, why figure it out mm -hmm. uh, the next step. So pretty much I decided to stay. And until one weekend, you know, I went to a gathering with my friends and where I met a professor and we started to talk and I was telling him about my situation. Um, so he just, you know, simply asked me, what would I do if I weren't afraid? And, you know, without even thinking, I said, of course I would move to Po. And, you know, it's so cool. It's a new city. It's the school. I love it. Um, but again, I have that fear how I'm going to make it work, right? How I'm going to pay for the tuition, how I'm going to pay for my rent. So going back, just I kept thinking about his question, what would I do if I weren't afraid? Mm -hmm. And just a couple months later, I decided to work with it. Um, you know, I quit my side job and pretty much pack all of the stuff and moved to Paul. So the first, I remember the first day of school, you know, after the orientation session, I walked up to the director of the school. So his name is Jack. Um, and I was asking him, okay, can, like, you know, I'm from Vietnam. I, I don't have any money. Like, do you guys waive mm -hmm. the tuition or like what scholarship do you have? And he was able to help me and pointed me to you know several scholarships. So that's what I did. I you know, applied to all of them <laughs> that I can have my hands on. Um, and then I found, you know, I did a couple of several jobs. You know, I waited tables, I, I work in the mm -hmm. kitchen of Asian restaurant. Actually, that's where I, I learned a lot of kind of you know how to make a lot of dishes uh, from that experience. Uh -huh. um, and I also uh, tutor high school uh, students, so that's really helped me financially to get through my my three years um, in Po. So after I graduated, um, one of my professors offered me to stay to do a PhD with him at school. And actually, the first time I would get paid, you know, is from no uh -huh. money. To now <laughs> I would finally get, get paid some money, and I was really excited. But, you know, deep down, I knew that I wanted more. Um, I always wanted to go to the U.S. to study. It's like my dream and it's the dream of a lot of people back in my country. And mm -hmm. at that time, I, I thought, you know, I couldn't because, again, it's going to be really expensive and I don't know anybody there. But I tried my best. And so I applied to a Ph.D. program in uh, Ohio University and I got accepted. So now wow. you know, I had. <laughs> Two choices, it's like one more time, right? I mean, whether I stay where I was, pretty much I know how to navigate life in France now. I have friends, I, I know where to go, or leave everything behind, move to the US again with my broken English <laughs> at that time. <laughs> and, you know, again, I don't have anybody uh, here. And so it's really a difficult decision as well. Um, but that time, pretty much, you know, just the conversation with that professor just kind of fly back in my head, you know, what would I do if I weren't afraid? So at the end, I decided to give it a chance and, you know, just move here um, by myself. And Wow. Yeah. That, that is so incredible because, you know, if you think about it, when you read through the doc's book, right, uh, you suffered setbacks in life, but you did not let your setback define you. You actually took the, what we call, you showed up. You mm -hmm. remained steadfast. You, you broke through barrier walls. Here you are, somebody coming from a, an Asian country, going to a French country and, and learning and getting educated and then coming to the United States and, and being able to show people, listen, when you go through setbacks in life, they can either destroy you or define you. And 
two, you're a perfect example of somebody that you did not let your setback define you. And if anything, you took the perseverance. You took the steps that you needed. You knew your truth that one day you wanted to do uh, and be a, a chemical engineer and, and have a, a doctorate, a PhD. Um, and that takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of encouragement. It takes a lot of patience. Uh, it takes a lot of reliability on others. Um, so what have you learned from the setback till your journey now? Yeah, what have I learned? So really, when I reflect on my journey, um, I think, you know, one of the things that really helped me through is that belief that, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. And, you know, I know deep down in me, like, I have that really strong desire to succeed. And, you know, that really drive me and help me to get through uh, difficulties in life. And also, you know, another thing I've learned that don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, actually, mm -hmm. there's one quick story there. So after my two years in Paris, before I moved to mm -hmm. Paul, since that time I didn't have any money. So I didn't know what to do. So I called the, the sponsor that, you know, sponsor our scholarship for that two years. And, you know, he didn't know me. I didn't ever met him in person, but I just right. pretty much made a call call. <laughs> and then, you know, I would just say, okay, I'm a student from Vietnam. I went through this scholarship. Um, but then now I got admitted to a, a school in Paul, but now I don't have money. Would you please give me another scholarship? So pretty much I didn't expect that he would get back to me. But to my surprise, two weeks later, he called me back um, and asked me, okay, so how much is the tuition cost? How much the renting, etc." And then he decided, okay, he said, Okay, normally I don't give people, you know, any scholarship after this two years program, but I will give you a check just to cover your first year tuition. And I was so grateful. I was so happy at least to have mm -hmm. that to help at the beginning. Sure. Yeah, so really, you know, just ask for help because, you know, the worst answer is to get is no, right? But, you know, if you don't ask for it, you don't get it. Absolutely. And, and, and because I've gotten to know you a little bit, I know that you, you, you're Buddhist. So is there a spiritual slogan or saying a verse that helped you along the way of your journey? Yeah, so I don't think it's, it's really a slogan or verse, but for me, it's more, it's more a belief. Um, so I do believe in karma. So when I think about, you know, karma is like the cause and effect, and it's not too much about good people always get good things or bad people always get bad things. But it's more, you know, everything you do, every choice you make will have a consequence, whether it's good or bad. And I think with that belief, I believe, you know, the more good you put in the world, good will come back to you. So I, you know, I use that as my internal uh, compass as well. So, you know, trying to do the right things, try to do the good things. So at least when, you know, at night I can have a good sleep and or I look at the person in the mirror, I can have that 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 peace in who I am. Wow. See, and folks, if you if you if you follow along, think about this. You go through a setback. You have to know your truth. You have to find joy internally or in your spiritual nature or whatever drives you. And two showed up. She never gave up. She showed up, and that's what you have to do. And, and when I see situations like this, I always tell people, I akin this to like being on a ladder. You know, um, ladders can have eight, ten rungs on them. And if you think about it, life's journey is like climbing that ladder. And you can either continue to climb or you can continue to get your hands stumped on and slide down by, by not continuing on following your path and your journey with perseverance, with steadfastness, with having that determination. Oh, you gave a great example. You look in the mirror and say, this is me. I can sleep at night because I know I, I'm a genuine person that, uh, hey, if I do well and I put forth my best effort, there's no telling what I can accomplish, right? That That is just so incredible. Well, you know, you, I know you've only been a part of our, the, the 180 platform here for a short time. Uh, how can we continue to add value to you? Well, I think just 
you know, keep doing what you're doing. I love all of your teaching, you know, the one word uh, each week, you know, you, you teach us about one word and I think that's really add value to myself. And I think I'm sure a lot of other people as well. Yeah, so just keep doing what you're doing. Okay, and well, that, that is incredible. So uh, obviously I wanna give you the opportunity. I'll tell you folks, I am very blessed to have met this young lady. She is full of passion. She's full of fire. Uh, she's full of determination. And here you see somebody that grew up in an, as, a, as a young girl, had a vision and a dream, didn't know how she was going to do it, but she did not let it stop her or deter her. She has gone on. I mean, come on. A young girl from Vietnam that comes goes to France, gets her education, as gets her master's, comes to the States, gets her doctorate, and she's a chemical engineer. And oh, tell us a little bit more about your Calm Leadership and Development Program. Yeah, so pretty much uh, I founded Calm Leadership and Development a couple months ago. And really, you know, by involving with the uh, John Maxwell team, you know, really, you know, inspire me. And, you know, my why is really to inspire others as well to be the best version of themselves. And, you know, I want people to be more and do more and have more in their lives. So that's pretty much the reason why I, I founded Calm. See, again, she continues to add value. A perfect example of somebody here that came to our 180 platform and actually delivers what she says she's going to do. She is trying to add value to people regardless of where you're from, where, what your background is. Uh, two, I really want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, I, I'm just so blessed and honored to have you a part of my life in a part of this journey we call uh, life here on earth. And I look yeah, forward to, uh, I want to give you the opportunity, any last minute things that you'd like to share with our audience. Yeah, sure. So I, I hope, you know, my story resonated with some of you. And really, if there's one message I want you to walk away with is, you know, think about things in your life right now, right? What do you want to accomplish? What things you want to create? What places you want to visit? And just think about it. Why are you not still not doing it? You know, what kind of fear is still holding you back? And think about it. What would you do if you weren't afraid? Oh, it goes right back to your speech. What would you do if you weren't afraid? And see, folks, when you go through a setback in life, I use there's two words that I always use that uh, tell, tell people whether they're going to be able to move forward or not. And I call them the two F's fear and failure. See, two had a fear, but she had determination that she was not going to fail. Too many people take that failure part and let it keep them down on that rungs of the ladder, rather than saying, hey, I'm going through some adventure in life, and I'm just going to keep climbing until I keep reaching where I want to be. And that's the, the zen that you have. You've got peace in your life. You uh, Add value to people. I have no doubt everywhere you go and, and, and everything that you do. I really can't thank you enough for being here. Uh, I look forward to us uh, being able to get together. I know, you know, we're both uh, a part of the John Maxwell team and we'll see each other again in March. Um, so to thank you for joining me today, folks, as you can see, this is our very first live interview here and we will have this series every Friday. Uh, stay tuned next week as I bring on Prophetess Paula LaBlack. Thank you, my friend, too, for being here with me. And I'll join well, you, you here in the well. studio. Yeah. Thank okay. you. It's my honor to be here. Thank you. You bet. Bye. Bye.